Okay, hello, welcome back. Uh, so today I want to do a quick video on how to play um, the Doctor Who RPG Adventures in Time and Space, this one here, um, and explain how you play it. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, I'm going to make a few assumptions before we start. First one being that you know what a role-playing game is, and the second one being that you know what a dice-driven role-play game is. Uh, if you're not sure of either of those, there's loads of stuff on YouTube and the internet where you can find out. Uh, so, Doctor Who Adventures in Time and Space is a dice-driven role-playing game, uh, and it uses 2D6. Uh, to work out all the mechanics inside. It's a rules light game so there's not a lot of crunch um, and its focus is on role play and investigation uh, rather than combat, although there is options for combat in there. Um, but much like the TV series, um, the guys in it, the Doctor and his companions, um, they will try quite hard uh, to find other ways to resolve conflict and issues uh, before the result in, uh, into violence. So in this tutorial um, I'm going to explain how to play the game, I'm going to use the pregens, there's a ton of pregens that you can get for this, just about every doctor and companion that's featured in the show over the years um, is available as a pregen. You can make your own characters, um, I'll probably do a separate video on character creation because it's not complicated but um, I want to keep this as short as possible um, and concentrate on the rules. Alright, let me just get rid of this picture here and stick this one up. This is your character sheet just up here. There we go. It's very hard to balance this when you're on the camera. Okay. Okay, so having a quick look at the character sheet, you can see that it's split up into different areas. Top left, you've got your attributes. Next to that, in the center at the top, you've got your skills. On the right hand side, you've got your bio data. Down the bottom left, you've got your traits. And then underneath in the centre is stuff. I'll run through each of the areas, but broadly speaking, um, you use 2d6 to determine the outcome of any uh, skill checks or opposed skill checks that you find in the game, and this includes combat. So the first d6 you'll add on a modifier from your attributes, and the second d6 you'll add on the modifier from your skills. So looking at attributes first, um, you've got awareness, coordination, ingenuity, presence, resolve and strength. There's little pips afterwards and each one of those pips represents a plus one on your dice roll. Next to that you've got your skills, athletics, convince, craft, fighting, knowledge, marksman, medicine, science, subterfuge, survival, technology and transport. And with each one of those uh, you'll see a number and that is also a modifier that you add to your dice score. So in very, very simple terms, um, if you wanted to try and uh, break onto a computer, a games master will tell you um, which attribute and which skill he wants you to use to try and do that. You roll 2d6, you'll add the modifier for the attribute and the modifier for the skill and see if you can beat the target number that he or she has set um, to be able to achieve that. Okay, so added to your attributes are things called traits. There's a whole list of them inside the core rule book. Um, you need to really look at those, but those give you an additional modifier to the attributes. So they're kind of like a specialised subject um, that your character is personally associated with. So if you've got like a scientific character, you might have the boffin trait. Um, some of the time travellers have the time lord trait or the vortex trait which help you um, do stuff that manipulate time and space. It's down to you as a player uh, to bring that up. So if a games master asks you for a skills check using ingenuity and convince, so ingenuity attribute and the convince skill, um, and the task that you're trying to do, you think as the player um, that one of your traits also covers that. It's up to you as the player to um, call out to the to, uh, games master and say, I've also got this trait there, and hopefully you'll get, uh, either the trait will say it or the games master will give you 
um, an extra couple of points to add to your dice roll, uh, making the chances of you achieving that goal even greater. There are good traits and there are bad traits. Uh, good traits make things a little bit easier for you and bad traits could make things a little bit harder for you. There is an incentive to take bad traits. Um, if you can incorporate your bad traits into your role playing or your skill checks, uh, there's a possibility that you can win additional story points. We'll talk about story points in a second. Uh, so moving on to skills, each of the, you've got all the different skills up there in the top centre. Uh, some of the skills also have expertise. So in athletics, for example, um, you could spend additional points when you're creating your character uh, and give that character expertise in, say, swimming or jumping or running or something like that and the same as the traits it's down to you as a player to bring that up with the games master when they ask you for a skill check if you think um, that very specifically what you're being asked to do covers uh, one of the expertise you have in that certain skill mention it we talked about story points each character has a number of story points uh, this particular character here the 11th doctor has eight story points and they're kind of like tokens that you can spend during the game uh, to change the outcome of stuff. So a story point can be used uh, to make a degree of difficulty uh, move it up one level, and we'll talk about those in a second. Um, it can also be spent to get a clue or a hint from the games master. Um, it can be spent on additional traits in character creation. Um, and it can be spent to give you uh, an extra dice roll for a skills check. Uh, once they're gone, they're gone, you can't use them anymore. Um, and also you'll find the NPCs also have story points which they can use uh, for the same reasons. So story points is a pool of tokens that you can use to chuck into the story to just change the outcome of certain things or give a bit of influence. And uh, you'll also see in the stuff box that's anything you might have, any gadgets, so your sonic screwdriver, your sensors, anything like that would go in that box. Uh, and in the bottom corner of that box um, it, it tells you your technology level. Your technology is where, f where in space or where in time you come from. So uh, technology level number one will be a primitive stone age person, right up to technology level number 12, um, which is beyond comprehension abilities available only to the Eternals. You can see the character sheet we're looking at. The Doctor is technology level 10, which is Time Lord. Uh, people where we are now, um, would be uh, technology level number five, which is spacefaring, late 20th and 21st century Earth, colonization of the solar system, system wide travel. Um, so that will tell you where in time and space your character comes from. So, bio data, if you look at the bio data page uh, section on the right hand side there, that's kind of your backstory and the information about your character. Um, just sort of so you can keep an eye on who they are, a little bit about them. That's pretty much all there is on your character sheet. So you've got your top left, you've got your attributes, centre you've got your skills, you know about your traits, uh, you've got your list of stuff, uh, and you've got your bio data with bits and bobs, and in the top right you've got your story points there. So that's everything you have on your character sheet. Right, okay, so as I said at the beginning, uh, it's a rules-like game, there's not a lot to it. So anything you do in a game where the outcome is unsure, you roll 2d6 um, and you uh, put, the, uh, put the result against the difficulty set by the game's master. Um, so he will ask you for a roll with an attribute and a skill. You add your modifiers to that, you roll your 2d6, you see how you get on. Um, if you've got any traits or uh, expertise you think would help, you mention that and try and get some additional uh, modifiers or possibly use story points. So looking at how to set the DCs or the difficulties for each of the skill checks, um, 12 would be a normal one. Um, so again if it's something that a normal person should have a 50-50 chance of doing, um, the DC would be at 12. And the difficulties go right up to 30 which is almost impossible and right down to 3. So anything that you want to do, uh, the Games Master will set the difficulty somewhere between 3 and 30 depending on how hard it is uh, be around about 12 if it's a 50-50 chance you'll add your attribute you'll think if you've got any traits you want to add um, you'll add your modifier for your skill and whether there's any expertise you want to add you roll your 2d6 put all your modifiers on there see if you beat the score okay it then gets a little bit more complicated but not a massive amount depending on how much or how little 
um, you beat the difficulty check level depends on the information you get so if you get nine or so say the difficulty level is 12 and you roll uh, 25 you've got nine or more over the required amount which would uh, count as a fantastic result and fantastic results mean that not only do you achieve the thing you're trying to do but you get some sort of additional bonus okay if you get a good result that means that you've rolled four or more above the target level that you were trying to aim for and straightforward you've succeeded in what you do uh, a success would be that if you've rolled equal to or three more than the target number so looking at that 50 51 you either rolled a 12 13 14 or 15 uh, so you ex you succeed so you do what you do but there may be uh, some kind of unexpected uh, problem or something um, that you didn't realize was going to happen has also happened so do you succeed yes but such and such also happens maybe you set an alarm off on a computer perhaps you wind up a computer and you manage to fix the computer but unintentionally you've triggered an alarm uh, somewhere else okay uh, if you roll um, one or between one and three less than the target number so you was aiming for 12 but you got um, 11 10 or 9 um, is a failure so you didn't do it but something good did happen out of it so think about the computer again you weren't managed to fix it um, but you were perhaps you got it going briefly for a second um, which was enough time to get some information off of it not all the information um, but the computer is not fixed so you didn't quite do it but you have gotten some kind of information or bonus from the task that you were trying to do uh, <coughs> if you get uh, up to eight less than the score you are aiming for um, straightforward you failed and if you get n more than nine underneath what you're trying to do not only did you fail but something bad has also happened okay um, you can use a story point uh, so if you've succeeded in doing something, so you've hit the target number, you can spend a story point to turn that into a fantastic result. So not only did you do it, something unexpectedly good has also happened. Um, but if you failed and you spend a story point, you can't turn it into a fantastic result, you can just move it one step up. So if uh, you had a, um, what was it called, disastrous failure, so you rolled nine or less, uh, nine or more uh, lower than the target number you went you spend a story point you can change disastrous to bad so uh, instead of no and loads of bad stuff has also happened it's just a straightforward no okay so that's the difficulty levels um, so that's your normal skill checks against doing a thing um, you've got your opposed skill checks which you can use for any kind of conflict resolution or dealing with NPCs and straightforward all you do with that is you'll describe what you want to do with the PC. The PC, uh, who is controlled by the Games Master, would roll uh, an ability and a skill check, and the result of that would then become the difficulty level that you need to beat to succeed in what you're doing. So, going back to our character sheet, let me just pop it up on my screen so I can see what I'm talking about. <coughs> okay, so say you want to uh, convince an alien to do a certain thing, you might use. Uh, Resolve and convince. Um, so you'd want to use that, and the alien would be doing the same thing. So the alien uh, who's controlled by the GM would roll his 2d6 and he'd add the points from his attribute of resolve and the points from the attribute of convince. And the result of that would then become the target number that you need to try and beat um, to be successful in doing that. Uh, okay, so when it comes to combat, um, they're split into two kind of rounds. It's an opposed skill check, so you're trying to do something against an NPC. So first of all, you describe what you want to do, um, and the NPC would, or the games master would describe how that character reacts to it. So say I want to shoot uh, the alien over there, and that alien is going to try and dodge out the way. Okay, so the alien over there, you need to find out the DC. So for, to dodge, um, you might say as the games master that you're going to ask for a strength and athletics chip uh, check. 
So you would roll your 2d6 and you would add the strength modifier and the athletics modifier to the result and that would give you the total, that would give you the difficulty level the character needs to be to be able to hit that alien that's trying to dodge. And then as the game's master you'd say to your player, I want you to use strength uh, and if we're using any, uh, any attack that involves a missile firing weapon use the, uses the skill of marksmanship, uh, any other kind of attack so punching someone or throwing something at it um, would use the fighting uh, skill. So I'm going to try and shoot my laser gun at it, so I would use the strength and marksman, I'd roll my 2d6, I'd add the modifiers to that and I would try and beat the difficulty or the number that the alien got from trying to dodge it. If I succeed then I hit it um, and depending on how well I did, how much um, over the target number I beat um, would depend on how the damage is modified. So each uh, there's a list of um, what you call it uh, damage ratings for various different weapons. Some weapons kill you outright. Some weapons take an amount of damage off. They're listed in the source book, um, and depending on how uh, how well or how how much above the uh, difficulty level number you got depends on how much damage is done. Using the fighting skill, so you're punching and that, the damage rating is whatever your strength is. So the Doctor here has got strength of three. If he successfully punches something, that thing would take three damage. When it comes to you taking damage, any of your attributes um, can be lost as a point of damage. So say, um, say a Cyberman shoots at you, um, but he is only sort of two or three below the target number, you're only going to take a quarter of damage, so you might take three points of damage. The game's master can choose which attributes that damage comes from. Normally you'd probably think it comes from strength, but when you look at some of the others, you've got resolve in there, you've got coordination, you've got awareness. All of those things, if you've just been shot with a laser gun, could also be affected. When any of these reach zero, depending on the game you're playing and the story you're playing, your character either dies or they're knocked out or incapacitated in some way. So having any of your attributes reduced to zero um, effectively knocks you out of the game until uh, another character can do something to bring you back or depending on the situation, I mean if you've fallen out of TARDIS uh, in space you're going to take 20 points of damage, um, you're dead really, let's be honest. Um, and some of the weapons, uh, when you look on the chart, like a Dalek's ray gun, if that hits you and gets a good or fantastic result, that's a death. So you need to be a bit careful when you're facing off against some of the NPCs. Um, so yeah, so any damage you take loses a point off of uh, the attributes. They can all come off of one or they can be spread out uh, between them. So that's fighting and combat and damage. Okay, I'm just trying to think, I think that's pretty much everything covered, so you know what attributes are, you know what traits are, you know what skills are, um, you know what expertise in the skills are, you know about your stuff, you know about your data, you know about doing a skill check against a thing, against a target number, you know about doing an opposed skill check, you know about combat, you know about um, damage and how that's worked out, that's pretty much it, it's, it's a rules like game. Oh, I don't know what I need to tell you about, initiative, hold on one sec. So the Doctor Who Adventures in Time and Space game really encourages people to try and use their noggin uh, to work out uh, conflict in situations rather than combat and the way the initiative is worked out kind of reflects that, but obviously there are species and characters within the Doctor Who universe that will attack first, thinking about your uh, Soltaran they're kind of a shoot first, ask questions later. So, to work out initiative and who goes when, um, you need to follow uh, this kind of uh, model here. So first of all, the Games Master will establish the scene, so where everyone is and what the environment is like, what's going on. Uh, you'll need to go around each of the characters and establish what everybody wants to do. So ask each character what they plan to do as a result of whatever's going on. So then it's take action. So this is kind of your initiative round. So the first people to act are any characters that want to talk. So any people who are just going to speak, they go first. Next are people who want to move. So anybody who wants to move, run around, exit the area, move. The next are the doers. So any characters that want to do something. So this is not combat stuff. So anybody that wants to 
fiddle with a computer, uh, shut a door, uh, manipulate a part of the environment, do something to alter the course of the conflict that's about to kick off. And then last of all is the fighters. So anyone who wants to fight goes last. And by doing it in that order, um, the scene will change. So the talkers go first, and you do all of your dark, you do all of your post skill checks, you do all your bits and pieces to resolve that. And as a result of that, that might alter what people want to do later on. So the talkers go first and see how they can manipulate the situation. Then the movers go, then the doers go, and finally, if all else has failed, then the fighters go. If you want to do a fighting action, and the results of a different character has changed what's going on, then let the DM know, let the games master know, and they will try and slot you into the initiative in a slightly different place. Okay, so it really does encourage people to first of all try talking, um, then try manipulating the environment in some way, and finally uh, the fighting is at the end. So that's how initiative works. Do it collaboratively um, with your players. Um, this is a, this is a story-based game where everyone kind of works together rather than one person taking the lead and everybody else kind of doing as they're told. It really is about building a big story. So that's how initiative works. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to know to start playing a game of Doctor Who. It is dead easy, just 2d6, roll your, roll your attribute, roll your skill, and away you go. Um, I'll probably do a review of the system itself, or a review of the core book, uh, and some of the source books in a later edition. We're playing this for the first time tomorrow night, so we'll see how it goes. I might record it and stick it on here so you can see how it went, if anyone's interested. I've um, got some other videos planned coming up. Uh, in the coming weeks. Um, I want to do a video on character creation for D&D. Uh, I want to do a video about how you can play Dungeons and Dragons without spending a penny at all. How you can play it and run it. Um, and I've got some other ideas for different videos. I want to try some other systems as well. I might do something with Call of Cthulhu. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. If you've got any ideas for videos that you want to see drop me um, a message underneath or a text or a link or find me on Facebook at the 5e Adventure Group. Um, all the usual stuff people say, if you like it, click the old subscribe button and the bell to get notifications when new videos come out. Um, and that's pretty much it. So enjoy your games. Uh, have a little look at this. You can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it from Crucible 7. Uh, directly and they will throw in the PDF and the core book as a bundle together um, and there's various other places on the internet that you can probably find it if you're that way inclined so take care see you again soon bye bye